Hey everybody, uh, I am here with someone I don't think I've had on my channel before, Coolio Vids! Hey there guys, this is history. <laughs> this will be in the history books. <laughs> yep, well, I'll tell my kids about this. I'm like, kids, <laughs> a long time ago, before I met your mother, I did a video with Duke. Yeah, yeah I'll, tell, I'll tell my grandchildren, back in Vietnam! <laughs> Grandpa, you weren't in Vietnam. Shut up, Timmy, I'm talking! <laughs> what a great name for a child, Timmy. Probably isn't gonna. They're probably not gonna name him that, but I'm going to call him that anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna be like the grandpa from South Park. <laughs> Damn it, Billy! <laughs> Anywho, um, as the the title of the video probably says, uh, um, recently, uh, as of this recording yesterday, Jeff Johns has announced that he is. Stepping down is writer of Green Lantern. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it's a big secret that you and me were big fans of, of John's and, and a lot of his work, but definitely Green Lantern. That was, the, that was the series I started reading when I got into comics. Uh, yeah, definitely. His run on Green Lantern is what makes me a Hal Jordan fan, of course. Um, it, you know, it, it's actually, I guess, what got me back in the comics. I was kind of in that age where I was like, oh, man, I, I want to be a nerd, but I feel like i got to grow up and uh, picked up Green Lantern Rebirth. And then Mr. Megorium comes in and says, no, no, Coolio, you can't grow up, and I'm played by Dustin Hoffman. That's exactly what he said. And then Dustin Hoffman showed up, and he's like, whoa. <laughs> what the hell's going on <laughs> But, but yeah, it's it's a it's a a run to remember, absolutely. There's so many things that uh, this nearly ten year long run on one book. That's a science fiction concept all on its own. <laughs> and and really, uh, he was talking in an interview that uh, he was approached and his, his you know started writing notes and everything for Green Lantern in 2003. So if you want to think about it, he's been writing Green Lantern or working on Green Lantern for a decade. Yep. And it's, 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 this is now, let's see, because before this, he had a very long run on JSA, and to an extent, you could definitely say The Flash, so this was like the last big thing he's dedicated a lot of his career to. Yeah, you know, um, a lot of, a lot of stuff that I love by Johns is, you know, like JSA stuff is good, uh, the mm -hmm. Teen Titans stuff is really good. Very much. Uh, it's just like, but... If you know Johns, you know him for Green Lantern, just because of all the things that he brought to this universe. And the fact that Green Lantern was, I don't know, he wasn't that big, of course, before Well, Josh before Ford. he came on, I mean... He was dead. <laughs> he was he was the frickin' Spectre. That's true. Hal Jordan Which, when I first, read, I first read um, Rebirth, I was like going, wait, wait what? He's, he's the Spectre? That's... <laughs> So I, I wasn't even questioning when this is happening. I was questioning wh why is this a thing, mm -hmm. and I because I, um, I was not fully aware of uh, you know him being dead. But then I you know got into the history and through the run and through reading about, it, I've learned to love Hal Jordan as a character just like you. And the biggest like I mean, uh, one of the one of the DC events was a huge tie-in, Blackest Night. Many of you can argue it if it was. You know, if you have an opinion on it, that's fine. But I personally love that because it was not only, I thought, a, a very good event, but a build-up to what he was doing with all the stuff before. He was very – most of his run was this, you know, building up on top of each other, you know, you know, big threat and then seeding seeds for the next threat a year in advance before, you know, the first big threat was about to get to it. Mm-hmm. It's uh yeah it's 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 really weird that everything Johns has been doing has always just been build up to something huge more. It's basically if I can compare it to uh, Nick Fury's line at the end of Iron Man, it's like you just step into a bigger world, you just don't know it yet. And when you get to Johns' run, we get just so many things, you know, the Blackest Night, the different colored lanterns, all the stuff about the Guardians. A lot of stuff that has well, because it's more recent, they have had, you know, cherry-picked and put into the animated series. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, before John's, there was no St. Walker. There there was, like, no big stuff with all the Black Lanterns. And, you know, it's it's all 
especially with the the Red Lanterns being the main villain in season one, you know that. Well, the first what, half of season one. Yeah, I, I forget that Cartoon Network does that weird thing where they you know half half the season seasons, and then yeah. cancel it, but. <laughs> But it, it's a there's so much that came from Johns' run and is now known as just common Green Lantern knowledge. Very, very much, very much so. And and plus, it also doesn't help that whenever they want to promote Green Lantern, now they just put a Jeff Johns book out. And but but he was the big thing, and it wasn't like you know he it was just all him on his own. Like he had other writers to hold him up, but he was mm-hmm. definitely the architect. They all followed his lead. The Sinestro Corps War was definitely an idea by him. The War of Green Lanterns was definitely an idea by him. People obviously contributed, but he was the you know the, the guy leading the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it's it's very clear that he's he's never been one to be like, oh yeah, I came up with this great idea. Everything. Screw I read about all of you, especially you, legendary writer and artist Dave Gibbons. <laughs> What's an Ethan Ben Cyber? I drew all of this. Yes, I. I am. These are all synonyms of me. <laughs> Not Jeff Johns. Me. <laughs> it just goes that picture of him with all the lantern rings on. He's like, yeah. yeah it gives you new context to that. <laughs> now we know. Now we know. All those rings are. Whenever he puts one on, it gives him the ability to draw differently. <laughs> to draw differently. That's <laughs> exactly what they do. I had to put my Dave Gibbons ring on and my my Patrick Gleason arm. <laughs> that's uh, that's Jeff Johns for you. He's uh, he's just he's just Laura Fleas. <laughs> yeah. Plus that character, like he's he's added more, you know, no, more noteworthy characters, not just concepts, but characters like Laura Fleas, like Atrocitus. Uh, oh, Saint yeah. Walker, cowgirl to an extent, though she's kind of gone forever. Like yeah. he, because there wasn't to an extent. Now there still aren't a lot of notable Green Lantern villains. Yeah, that's the thing. Before this, you'd be like, "Oh, let's name all the Green Lantern rogues." Um, Astro, um, um, Shark, Parallax, oh. Shark, <laughs> Parallax. Sinestro in a different outfit. <laughs> That's kind of true. <laughs> uh, Sinestro's mustache. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sinestro's mustache. Damn it, that thing had care. I, I'm still. I'm really, really upset that that Sean Connery got his acting credit. He didn't get acting credit in Green Lantern for playing the mustache. No, most people don't know that because it wasn't credited, but. That was that was Sean Connery's true last role, playing Sinestro's mustache in that movie. Oh, I'm just imagining Sean Connery on like Mark Strong's face. <laughs> Sinestro, we should train him. Sinestro, we should train Green Lantern. Yeah, but we're also Green Lanterns. Oh, um, yeah. we should train in um, Teal Lantern. The Teal Lantern. No, I'm going to sound like Patrick Stewart. The God power of the Highlander. I don't even know what we're doing anymore. Uh, yeah. I mean, and the, the shameful thing on my end is I don't own all of it. I've read all of it at one time or another. I need to get the rest of it in trade now since this development has happened. Yeah, same here. I've got, you know, some of the collective trades they did, like Hal Jordan Wanted and uh, Asian Origin, stuff like that. I got um, I got Rebirth, and then all of the ongoing up until Rage of the Red Lanterns, and then randomly War of the Green Lanterns, and then the first New 52 volume. I... Uh, yeah, I got... Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, yeah, I've got um, Volume 2, and oddly enough, I because I kind of stopped reading Green Lantern when Boz showed up, um, I have been because I've I've had a subscription for it, which I think ends next month. Yeah, so I I just literally just put my uh, on my pull of Green Lantern, and then I get this news. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and I know some people have been really down on that. It's still pretty good. Well, it's not okay. It's not the greatest thing he's done with the character or in general, but I, it's still solid. Yeah, I reread was it thirteen through sixteen, 
Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know, by 16, I found myself, I, I didn't hate, I don't hate Boz. I'll say that. Um, I, I, mean, I think the problem many people are having is, oh, he's a new character that's filling in for the character that they've been the big name. Mm-hmm. Basically, Boz is having the same suffering problem that Kyle Rayner had back in the day. Yeah. Except the thing is, we more than know, well, we definitely know now because of the cover to issue 20, that Hal's, Hal and Sinestro are going to be coming back mm-hmm. and to pass off whoever uh, is going to take it, which we should talk about who we think might or could take over the book. Oh, yeah, that's crazy to think. Who would take on Green Lantern after a, a guy who did it for 10 years? Uh, I don't know. I I just, well, there's a rumor going. Like I haven't seen them confirm this yet. DC, but uh, apparently all the writers are leaving their respective books. Oh yeah, I've heard that that all the the Lantern books, they're uh, all the creative teams are losing them in May. So it's kind of like a like an in May. It's just gonna be a it's, farewell, colorful explosion. Yeah, it's a it's 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 the new Fifty Two equivalent for Green Lantern. Everything is just changing. Uh, oh my god, that's what it was. It's like. The Lantern books, John's like, wait, wait, guys, guys, I have to finish my story. Can we hold it off like a year or so? I'm like, no, no, we, our books are down. Well, let me finish my story, and then you guys can reboot Lantern. I'm, I'm just kind of busy. Well, if, if that happens, if, if that's happening, I'd be okay with Peter Tomasi taking over the main book. I would say that. I like what he's doing on uh, Core right now. Well, he's been doing it for – because he – you know, Gibbons did Core for the first – about. Uh, year up until after uh, the Sinestro Corps story was done, he took over that book. And mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. And then there was that weird thing where he left it to do Emerald Warriors, and it gave us the P- Tony Bedard, who's... He's not awful, but he's just kind of... He's not at the level... He's, he's not at the level of both Johns and Tomasi, because Tomasi basically could carry... could carry all alongside him. If you were just reading Core. You were still you were reading, oh, if not, okay. if not an equally solid book, a book that's almost up there. Oh, definitely. I definitely enjoy what he was doing. Um, I know that they have been him and John's have been you know, discussing the lantern stuff all, ever since Rebirth. You know? Yes, uh, he was before he really took on because before he went to be kind of the writer, he you know, he's been known for for that. Uh, you know, good chunk at least five years or more whenever we started doing core he was an editor he, he was mainly an editor but he switched over to just doing writing so that's been good for him i be i think he's the most logical choice mm-hmm. if they decide that who you know the guy who's writing fury of firestorm deserves it then uh well they're still wrong uh <laughs> I don't know how to put that any any simpler. Uh, yeah, I saw got canceled, right? That just that last week they announced, along with Deathstroke, Hawkman, and three other books that we'll never care about. And Deathstroke just got good though. <laughs> I love that irony. I, I, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, people, I put it in my latest review of issues 15 and 16. So I'm like, I'm really excited for this book, and then this just in Deathstroke has been canceled. That, I'm sorry, but that made me laugh. <laughs> I was wondering, like, are you ever going to point out that it's been canceled? And then I saw that text and I laughed. Uh, I literally, the day I filmed that the day before that was announced. Oh, really? I thought that was a joke. I thought that oh. was like, I thought you were playing it up. Wow. No, I was like, man, this this book is so much better than like the past two writers. This actually feels like Deathstroke. And then, oh. <laughs> Anyways, Jeff Johns is leaving Green Lantern. To to focus on Justice League. Which I'm hoping is a good sign. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, th- you know, that that's the thing is he said that Hal will you know, be coming back to Justice League eventually. So there's always that to look forward to. We'll always you know, be looking at that. And Justice League like has been getting better. He's Baz on the America team, if that, unless that's a weird fake out, which I highly doubt they do that. Yeah. It, it's funny that he's writing two Justice League books. I know. But if it means if, if Green Lantern means that that's going to get better because I I have not been I've been kind of disappointed by Justice League I mm-hmm. like I like I said with the bad stuff it's been solid but it's not the Johns I I love it's 
That is true. It's kind of. It feels like it's him on autopilot. The definitely the first arc really did feel like that. It was. Just it it like, also oh. didn't help that I couldn't stand Jim Lee's art when he was being filled in. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 no offense. I know they had to get it, ru- you know, rushed out fast, but. Those anchors could not. The other anchors who weren't the main one that always works with him, I can't remember his name right now, they don't work with him that well, and it was ugly. Yeah. The, the, I the, am, however, liking the, the Throne of Atlantis crossover. The Throne of Atlantis is probably the. You know, Just League has been getting better and better, and Throne of Atlantis is proof of that. And it always feels good when. Um, you had the same writer doing the crossover events for both books. because it, it, it's, it's good to have consistent. that consistency, yeah. Yeah, it's very consistent between Aquaman and Justice League right now, and it's it's really good. I'm enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And, yeah, he'll just be doing two... Well, because Aquaman, it's been iffy on whether or not... If he's going to be staying on that, there was a while where he said... Where, where it was confirmed... Well, not confirmed, it was rumored. Oh, he's leaving! They haven't confirmed that at all yet. Mm-hmm. I, I hope they, you know, they give him a little longer, a little long while, because at least when he was doing Barry Allen Flash, he at least had good couple years of messing with the Flash universe. Yeah. So I was kind of more accepting of that. Like with, you know, with with him leaving Green Lantern, I'm 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 very upset about it. But like you said, we've had close to a decade of comics out of it. Yeah, it's kind of, I think, I don't know exactly when, but I remember talking with uh, Dan about this, because I was like, man, Jeff Johns has been on Green Lantern for a while. I wonder if he's ever going to step down. And, and then Dan's like, well, who would you have replace this guy as the Lantern? Runner? I was like, ah, that's the thing. <laughs> Johns is, is so, he's, he's done so much for Green Lantern. And that's the last really. book that, when I remember when JSA... Uh, when they uh they the the new writers came onto that it was the guys who did uh who did fable jack of fables of uh, William yeah. M and, and Sturgis and you could instantly tell that they did not capture a single ounce of that magic <laughs> and and they it it, it was because <laughs> granted Johns made that book almost impossible because the the amount of members on JSA. At least the you know the title the because that title ironically enough he a title that he spent almost a decade on had two different volumes it's, and he's happening again with Green Lantern now the irony <laughs> the irony uh, when he left because he he literally had a team that was larger than a it felt like you know like I've seen high school classes that have fewer members. <laughs> And, and I and I go to a big high school, so so he didn't exactly leave. You know, here's this team with half of the population of the Earth. Good luck. Good luck. And even when they like they they launched a, a spinoff team book and split the team in half, both books felt like there was too many people. <laughs> These writers, because he managed to you know make. I don't know how, but he managed to make that they make that feel like that book was anchored down. Johns managed to make you know keep it consistent, not make it go. Okay, I have to figure out probably because you know not every issue he was going. Okay, where is every character ever? It's like the entire book is just them roll calling it. Yeah, the first issue of every arc is them doing the roll call for the mission briefing, and then they actually get the shit going. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I only read, like, the first arc, and I tried to read the – when they did the team split, but I couldn't even get for that either. But, yeah, yeah, I'm afraid that might happen. The current track record of DC <laughs> really not helping that theory. No, not at all. It's not easing my worry. Because uh, I'm, I'm thinking, let's see, when – let's see, George Perez was on Superman for, like, two days, and – now Scott Liddell's going on that. I, I've heard that book's actually been okay, but I don't really care for Scott Liddell as a writer at all. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, re- I read the first arc of Red Hood and the Outlaws. I'm done with Scott Liddell. <laughs> <laughs> I re- and, and the thing is, I read that not because I was excited to read it, 
but because someone was like, you can't, you, you barely even read the first issue. You, you can't call crap on that. So, to, you know, put that guy's money where his mouth is, I said, fine, I'll read the whole thing. And then replied with, I've never wasted more time in my life. <laughs> and I read Luigi's Mansion twice. That is an accomplishment. An accomplishment where I felt absolutely no no accomplishing goals whatsoever, but it was a less it was less of a waste than reading six issues of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you got to be Luigi. Now Adele decides to go go crazy on me and do a Luigi's Mansion comic book, then everything's full circle. But, you know, <laughs> back to back to Green Lantern. Um yeah, so uh, you want to talk about issue 20 of Green Lantern? Yeah, sure. It's happening. <laughs> it's it's going to happen. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. No. It'll be uh, the end of this third army story they've been doing. Yeah, it'll be the end of the third army. And I guess I guess it'll be the end of the Wrath of the First Lantern stuff as well. It's, it's John's has said that it's all coming together. Everything that he's worked on is all finally... It's going to come to a big, epic conclusion, and we're going to learn about Sinestro's fate and what's going to happen to Hal Jordan, and I'm pumped. And then the last panel is going to be an autistic kid staring at a snow globe. Well, that's not good. <laughs> no, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> By the way, if, if anyone's curious, that a, a television show literally ended that way. I can't be good. I can't uh, be good at all. A TV show that was on for years, and apparently it was all just in the imagination of a of a child looking at a snow globe. Oh, that's cool. How much you want to bet that uh, his dad's going to show up? Hal Jordan's dad's just going to be like, "Hey, son. Hey, son. You want you want to watch <laughs> me fly a plane? Do I? Do you want to watch me fly a plane? <laughs> and it just like hey, Hal's son face. loves to reuse that scene. <laughs> oh my god! It's just a scene like panel of how Jordan's face smiling. And Do then I end of book. Oh my god. Yeah, that's the reboot. It's just all of a sudden like a big flash of light and it goes back to Hal Jordan as a kid. This this ten year run was being read by Hal and <laughs> was being read by Hal. That's and the then thing. He, and then you know when he's done he doesn't seem to catch on to this in any form or he doesn't look at it like a Twilight Zone esque conspiracy where he's seeing his future. No, he just thinks it's some wacky adventure. Uh, a wacky adventure where his dad dies. Yeah, where the car- where his- where the guy who dies happens to be named as his father. And... <laughs> Do I? Do I? <laughs> I'm not fulfilling a prophecy at all. Yep, that's yep. Uh, we predicted it, folks. <laughs> Yeah, after that, his dad's just like, okay, then we're going to, then we're all going to get ice cream. And he's making this sound like the most amazing thing. It's he's making it sound more cheerful than you know Batman's parents. Like, we're gonna have ice cream in the plane. It's gonna be great. In the plane. Yeah, you'll be eating yours while watching me while I eat ice cream on the plane. <laughs> while I eat ice cream. It's just like good I am, son. He gives the Batman thumbs up, but he also has an ice cream cone in his hand. (laughs) And then randomly Gordon's going, go, go. (laughs) Yep, that's how this works. Yeah, and then and it turns out that will tie into the series I mentioned on creating in the Q and A, where it's a whole series focused on that version of Gordon. Oh, that's good. I'm 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 ripping off the Pink Panther and calling it James Gordon. I, I would watch that. Oh, God, I would watch every second of that. Uh, That's so great. Just like that Gordon, just not knowing what the hell is going on just all of his life. <laughs> Where are my pants? Um... <laughs> when you have, like, really serious <laughs> intro music and everyone else is, like, in a really serious tone, but it's just Gordon, like, where's my pants? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody save me! <laughs> Oh my god, that's no, no, great. No, 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 the, the way it should work is the, the opening credit sequence should be, you know, playing that song, do rip off the Smallville opening if you have to, mm-hmm. and have, have all of the rest of the cast, you know, do their, you know, their Smallville looking at the camera, and then have it be starring whatever the actor's name is, and he's staring in the opposite direction. <laughs> exactly, yeah, they, hold, they do the whole, like, turnaround thing, but Gordon actually turns the wrong way, so it's just his back. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> that, that, or that's or even thing. worse, because sometimes they do it where, you know, the camera is zooming in and turning around you. We need to have him, like, trip him. Yeah, and it's like it goes right into his face, like on Spaceballs. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> save me. Yeah, he's like, go, go. Go, go. <laughs> I don't think we're accomplishing what we meant to do with this video. So Jeff Johns is leaving Green Lantern. <laughs> yeah, and I, like I said, it, it is very sad to see it happening, but um, especially when how short runs go in any form at all, for, you know, for one reason or another, either the book gets canceled or the writer decides, you know what, I'm moving somewhere else because I want to. Mm-hmm. We yeah we got over we got close to a decade I think we got a fair share yeah it's weird to see Jeff Johns because it's like you can't be mad at the guy you can't be like oh you can't believe you're leaving the lanterns like well good run man you yeah have have fun doing whatever you're going to do you yeah you 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 yeah we, we we're content with this <laughs> I'm glad he he left peacefully really he just uh, well he hasn't left yet technically but are you seeing the future um. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm done, guys. Thank you for the run. It's been a blast, and I'll see you guys later. It's just like, oh, that was nice. You don't get that often in comics. You usually get like a big explosion of, oh, no, it's, they were fired online. You ruined my life and took my cop and... They waste of the academy training. Waste ran yeah. over my dog and... And my dad in a plane with ice cream. <laughs> they put my dad in a plane with ice cream and Bane blew it up and Iron Man couldn't save him. And, and Steve Carell fell out of the sky. <laughs> <laughs> this thing was awful, but thanks, Johns. No, 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 no. After, after Johns gives that horrible, horrible, depressing thing, he's like, but I was happy with all the work I did. <laughs> like, he gives us the most over-the-top depressing story and then stops it with, but I was happy with the work I've done. <laughs> no, most seriously. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't think we're going to really go anywhere serious now. So, Well, yeah, just, just know, guys, that as Lantern fans, we are uh, glad, you know, John's had such a great run, and he will be missed. Hopefully, they'll Hopefully, I, I if if they haven't made the decision to just you know choose Tomasi, I questioned. Well, that just throws another into the pile of what the hell they're doing. But I I hope you know if if they're all leaving that you know Tomasi gets Green Lantern because mm -hmm. he's the he's the one that makes the most sense. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> no, 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 Coolio. We have to give it to Peter Milligan. Oh, God damn it. Well, I like Peter Milligan. Never mind. But it's still... We have to give it to Peter Milligan, who wrote Justice League Dark. Yeah, but he's, he's doing all right. Uh, Red Lanterns. Blaze is a crazy bitch. I haven't bitch. been reading that book at all. It's it's good. Blaze is fucking crazy. Oh, so it's... So nothing's changed with Blaze at all since her... No, but Atrocitus has. He, he uh... Listens you know, to jazz music. He listens to jazz, and he ponders about his life a lot. I wonder what would happen if I was voiced by his specific voice actor. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the guy's name off the top of my head. So, Paul McCartney. <laughs> uh, you're full of rage. Uh, yeah, I'm really full of rage. You know, it's just me, Paul McCartney. <laughs> so I had to go through an ugly divorce. <laughs> this Ringo is atrocious. Yeah, you know, you know, the Red Lanterns. They're really mean. <laughs> <laughs> they they won't they won't put my music on 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 the refrigerator. I wrote a song for the Red Lanterns. They didn't like it. It wasn't it wasn't angry enough, and that's because yeah. it wasn't angry. So I'm gonna go do a voiceover for Thomas. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> they don't want me anymore, so I'm going over to the good side. Uh, so yeah, John's is leaving, and we're both really sad, but we're also I pretty think happy. We're sad. I don't know anymore. <laughs> Either way. Yeah, so um, I, we're running kind of low on time here, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, good, goodbye, everyone. Thank you for listening to Half Seriousness and whatever the hell the rest was. I don't know. <laughs> Bye. See you guys.